I want to start off by saying working this way is something that is fairly new to me. I haven't often put watercolour and coloured pencil together. This is something that I'm going through. It's a phase I am trying to explore creatively and I'm so happy that I'm able to explain part of this process to you. As you can see, I have started off with a pencil sketch of the view that I saw when I visited the market that day. These are taken from a series of photographs and also videos. I took screenshots of videos, certain um, moments in time and also that great image of kosher. So my setup is to have those images on an iPad and I will use that as reference. So now getting on to the watercolour section, I'm starting off with uh, the vegetables. The basic colours, we're talking about uh, like I think they're carrots, courgettes, peppers. We're not even mixing colours properly, I'm just letting the mixing happen on the paper. So there's uh, the peppers merging into the carrots and also the courgettes. I am roughly following the pencil line, but I'm not filling it in very um, precisely. I can see the pencil line underneath. Because I know that I'm going to be using coloured pencil and perhaps brush pen, I can afford to be this loose. Uh, for some of you, it might come as a bit of a shock, but I love the spontaneity and also the freedom of working this way. Uh, these are the aubergines. You can see that I've mixed a variety of colours. They will be probably Payne's grey, a bit of brown, uh, and those that I've just filled in are beetroots. Now for faces and figure work. Uh, I know for many people this is somewhat tricky. Uh, I just want to tell you that I used to be an editorial illustrator for 10 years, so figure work was something that I did literally every week. So to mix the skin colour, it's a mixture of ochre, a bit of burnt sienna, a tiny drop of Payne's Grey. I might add a little bit of permanent rose. And they're, they're not accurate. Uh, this is just like a approximation of what I saw. And areas here, I'm adding a tiny bit more contour and contrast by mixing up a slightly darker shade. In that along the side of uh, the arm and also uh, parts of the, the neck where areas are in a bit more shadow. One of the wonderful ways of working like this is that pigments will just blend and mix in such unique ways. And there's not really um, a hard and fast rule. I just let them do their thing and whatever turns up, I will work with. And again, that adds to my feeling of um, freedom and spontaneity and it loosens me up really. So I'm quite happy to see uh, what's gonna happen. I think these are just tomatoes being added here. Oh, the lady at the end is actually Terry Runyon, who was also on the art walk trip with Kosher. Here's a close up of her. This is actually from a video that I shot. I wanted to um, add her. I showed her this finished piece and I said, oh, you're the lady at the end. And she was so thrilled. Moving on to the second set of market stall holders. This was taken from screenshots that I had of videos and I think I had to put together like three sets of images to get a setup that I wanted. It's pretty much the same sort of process. I've added in um, the basic colour for their bodies. I'm going to let them dry and I've started filling in the vegetables. The products at the front, the actually new potatoes that were in little plastic bags. Every storeholder had very similar products, which was courgettes, carrots. Um, but this one, that, as you'll see in a little bit, also had plums and I think green gauges or green plums, I don't know, but they were very, very sweet. And it's exactly the same. This is like the first layer, the first path that I'm putting down, which will give me the base color that I need, green courgettes and yellow courgettes. 
Uh, now we're getting on to the plums. As you can see, I'm trying to create the shape of them. I've just filled that crate with purple. And later on, I'm going to show you what I do with coloured pencil to define certain plums, just to give the information that there were loads of them there instead of this mass of purple that you're seeing at the moment. Just to the right of what I'm painting now were the prices for each produce it had lovely lettering on it they've got very unique ways of lettering in France um, it's very beautiful and that was something that I also wanted to capture in this piece you can see there that the purple of the plum is now mixing with the nectarines that I'm adding here. They were a selection of nectarines and peaches. And I don't mind the pigments merging together like this. I, I know that later on I can pick out individual bits of fruit and uh, work on them so that they will read better as nectarines. Now we're getting on to the bags of new potatoes. Of, uh, the bags were clear so I didn't think I needed to give much more information than that. Uh, these were cantaloupe melons which were perfectly in season. They were so delicious and ripe. As you can see I flit from area to area while I'm waiting for one section to dry because I can't always be adding pigments. I know how my watercolours work that if I add a pigment too soon, it will spread too far. So I know that if I wait a minute or two, I will be able to add contrast, like I added this drop of green. I timed it so that it wouldn't merge with that entire area. Um, you can see this is a device that I use quite often. So this is what it looks like. Let's call it the first layer, the base layer that has all the watercolour and you can see already that they are merging, all the pigments are doing their thing and it needs to be um, dried before I add the watercolour pencil so it requires patience but it's totally worth it. I also want to show you, <laughs> I had this image of kosher but because I had my palette on that side of my sketchbook all the flicks of watercolour were landing on her but I thought it looked kind of sweet it looked quite magical so uh, I just went with it and that's the beauty of sketchbooks. The photograph was taken on a really bright sunny day so there was a lot of high contrast that's why I've only filled in part of her face. It's very tempting to think, yeah, but her skin, your skin covers your whole body and it's a certain color. But when it comes to communicating, let's say the direction and strength of the sun, this is a device that is um, really handy. And I, I know this from my, from my editorial illustration days when I was asked to illustrate ladies on holiday or whatever. And Kosher was wearing a really distinctive t-shirt. It had massive patches of red and pink. I didn't want to make it too dominating because it's actually the expression on her face that I wanted to capture. It was she was very happy to to be painting there with us, and I thought that was more important. So the colours that I've put on her t-shirt are actually quite knocked back to uh, what they were in reality, and that was just a creative decision. Uh, she was wearing jeans, and I was trying to get the the colour just right in this section here to give the impression of a very sunny day. I have used uh, devices, watercolour ways of working that give you the, the strong sunlight coming from a certain direction. That's why I won't be filling in the whole of these denim shorts. Although, you know, it is tempting to do so. You can see I'm adding drops of uh, a much more pigmented blue. It's probably got a, a touch of Payne's Grey in there. Now I have to wait for this to dry, but I'm really happy with how that looks already. These are the brush pens that I've been using. They are by Pentel and you can buy replacement cartridges. The three that I had on me were a beige, a brown and also a burgundy. These are the only coloured pencils that I've got from Caran d'Ache. They're the luminescence brand. 
In some ways it's really good because I have a fairly limited palette. It will be quite cohesive if I use just a few colours. What I do with these pencils is basically I'm not outlining. It might look like that I'm outlining but what I'm doing is filling in the areas which have the densest contrast where the vegetables have created shadows on top of each other basically filling in the shadows it's very difficult to explain until you try it yourself i think these are onions so what you'll see here is me giving the impression of load of onions piled on top of each other by using the negative space i i don't know if i'm explaining myself but as you watch this video, I hope you'll get an idea of the process that I use. Moving on to uh, the guy who's drinking the water, I used the sepia brush pen or brown brush pen just to add a bit more information to his eyes and also to um, the arm that is holding that bottle of water. It is really tempting to try and outline everything but often, I keep saying this, the brain can work out what is going on and you only need to indicate a few things and your brain will work out the rest. It is so, <laughs> so clever like that. So this was a lady, I think she, she was looking over at Terry and I just basically added, it looks like I've added a strand of hair, uh, her eyelid and eyelashes and gave a bit more indication of her fingers and that was pretty much it. Back to the coloured pencils. I'm using a different dark green, it's probably a sap green. Again, the same technique where I'm looking at my reference photo and going for the areas which have the most contrast. This was actually one of my favourite parts, was to fill in the lettering that I spoke about. It was very distinctive and uh, I love seeing all the different signs that they put up with the prices and uh, I do speak a bit of French so I, I knew <laughs> how to ask for figs or whatever so um, I, I was lucky in that respect. One thing that I will say um, coming up, once I took a closer look at um, what I'd written I realised that the onion sign was actually in the wrong area, it was uh, should have said carrots. <laughs> so what you see me doing here is collaging a piece of paper so that I can stick it over that sign. And I do this really often and it might seem like, oh, but you're spoiling the piece or it's cheating, but you know, it's my sketchbook and I wanted it to say carrots because um, I realized that uh, onions should have been in the sign behind it. So that's how I got over that little tricky problem. With this lady, I was not overly happy with the shape of her nose. I had the watercolour had gone over the pencil line. So this is a trick that I use all the time is to use a very sharp scalpel blade. This is something that I've been doing since college and just to scratch off the excess watercolour so that the shape of her nose was more in keeping with what I had in mind. Actually, I love working in coloured pencils. I've realised that it completely helps me to be free, but also add that information. And I really hope that you are able to kind of gather what I'm trying to achieve here. This guy with the beard was really, really difficult. It just looked so stuck on. <laughs> I was trying to make it a little bit more, um, I don't know, realistic. 
<laughs> now we get moving on to Kosha's big smiling beaming face I was so happy that I got her expression right you know this isn't a realistic depiction my memory of that day was we were so happy to be painting together and I got her um, personality through overall I think what I created here um, was what I had in mind so I'm dreadfully pleased with how this turned out my memory remembers all these different signage for the cucumbers the peaches and the hustle and bustle of it so um, for me it's it's a really wonderful piece if you've been following my work for a while you notice that I do leave a lot of white space so the paper is showing I haven't filled in all the vegetables or the t-shirts or the tops and even the hair I've left out it's just a way of conveying enough information without overcrowding the piece one thing of note was the belt that Kosha was wearing that had the coloured pencils in was made out of a black material. I just outlined it, otherwise it would have just been too dense and taken away from the expression which is what I wanted to convey. If you've enjoyed this video please consider leaving a comment, a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you would like to see more process videos like this, I'd be really happy to hear from you.